Good evening and thank you for joining us. Time is quickly running out for a resolution that would allow Ukraine to reclaim Crimea, the territory it's lost to Russia. The West says it supports Ukraine and Canada's Prime Minister will make a visit there next week. But neither Stephen Harper nor any other G7 leader seems willing to step in with force. On Sunday, Crimeans will vote to leave Ukraine and tensions are high as Ukrainians brace for a Russian attack. Our chief political correspondent, Tom Clark, is in Kiev tonight with the latest. Tom? Thank you, Robin. Well, the countdown to war or peace has begun. Tonight, Russian President Vladimir Putin said he will wait until after the referendum to make his next move. That's less than 48 hours from now. Meanwhile, Russian troops are massing on the border with Ukraine, and in response, Ukraine has mobilized its army. Just north of Kiev, the Ukrainian military put on a display of weaponry intended to show that it is prepared to defend itself from a Russian invasion. But it is woefully underfunded and underprepared. This entire region is bracing for war tonight. Now, it may not come to that, but no one has yet found a way out. We have eyes tonight on all the potential flashpoints. Global's Paul Johnson is in Crimea, and Global's Mike Armstrong is in Donetsk in eastern Ukraine, and that is where we begin. It is where the standoff with Russia has claimed its first casualty, and where Mike Armstrong has been assessing the mood. Mike. Well, Tom, after the death in this square last night, the city declared today a day of mourning. It is extremely quiet here tonight. The question is, for how long? This is a city under strain. It is in the eastern corner of Ukraine, a country in turmoil, and closer, many say, to the neighbor on the other side of the border, about an hour away. Our wish is to be a part of Russia, this woman says. Lenin Square on this day is primarily pro-Russian. There are Ukrainian flags, but they're high and hard to reach. The lower poles have the flags of Russia and the Soviet Union. A pro-Russia group is collecting names, calling for a referendum. It will be better go to Russia, be with Russia, you know, but not with Europe. With Europe. No, eh? no, no. There is a tension here that has been simmering for weeks. It boiled into anger on this spot last night. There were two protests at the same time. Police were keeping apart pro and anti-Russian demonstrators. It degenerated into violence. Today, both sides are blaming paid provocateurs bust in from outside. My husband was here last night. This woman says there is fear today. People are nervous, showing support for their country. Her husband took a Ukrainian flag to the protest last night. Her son wanted to do the same at school. Uh, my child wants to uh, take uh, Ukrainian flag. Uh, today and I stop him because I'm afraid of ag aggression. Just a few blocks from the square, the regional authority offices are protected by riot police and razor wire. A pro-Kiev government is in place, but the building has been stormed twice recently by pro-Russian demonstrators. One of the leaders is in custody. Separatism is a criminal charge in Ukraine. Now, more protests are planned. Pro-Russian organizers are calling for two this weekend. Some have suggested the government ban demonstrations for the coming days. Now, the Russian foreign ministry today said the violence in Donetsk shows Kiev isn't in control here. It says Russia has a responsibility towards its compatriots and reserves the right to protect them. Now, that's got Ukrainian officials nervous who say it sounds like a pretext for an invasion and quite similar to what Russia said about Crimea. Tom? Okay, thanks, Mike. That's Mike Armstrong tonight in Donetsk. Well, Crimea remains ground zero in this crisis. The referendum on Sunday contains two questions. Number one, do you want to join the Russian Federation? Question number two, would you prefer that Crimea be independent? There is no option for the status quo. And the outcome of the referendum is hardly in doubt, as most of the pro-Ukrainian voters in Crimea have already said that they're going to boycott the vote. But to add to the tensions there tonight, there is a new financial crisis in Crimea, and Global's Paul Johnson is standing by with the details of that. Paul. Tom, the Crimean Peninsula today really feels like a society hit by some kind of slow-motion earthquake. People don't know who's in charge here anymore. They're worried about money that they have in the bank. And for a lot of them, 
They're scared for their personal safety. If you take the train south from Kiev to Crimea, you're probably going to face these guys, men with dogs and bats and of unknown authority and command, who are nevertheless searching and intimidating people as they arrive. For others, it's been much worse. These are the friends and supporters of 28-year-old Mikhail Vodovchenko, who attended a pro-Ukraine rally a couple of days ago and hasn't been seen since. There are reports here of people being abducted by shadowy gangs of armed men. They suspect Mikhail has disappeared because of his politics. He was not uh, any way a political activist or something like that. Uh, he is just a usual Simferopol inhabitant. He is a, a worker, he is a builder by his profession. But the wider fear for most Crimeans is this. What will happen to their savings? If on Monday they wake up to learn they're going to be living in a different country, what currency will they use? What laws will govern the banks? That uncertainty triggered huge lines at banks today as Crimeans tried to withdraw as much cash as they could. And to stop a full-on bank run here, starting tomorrow, the maximum amount of cash that people will be able to take out of their savings accounts will be the equivalent of about $35 a day. Tom? Thank you, Paul. Paul Johnson tonight in Crimea. Well, in London today, there was marathon last-minute talks to try and avoid a confrontation. For more than six hours, American Secretary of State John Kerry met with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. They left with promises to keep in touch, but little else. Lavrov stated bluntly that the two sides do not even share a common vision about the crisis and that many differences remain. Kerry, for the first time, however, sounded a bit conciliatory. We believe it is not insignificant that we acknowledge there are legitimate interests. Historical, cultural, uh, current, strategic. So with diplomacy stalled and any military action delayed until at least Sunday night, there's an eerie calm here right now, but it can't mask the fear that the next few days could make or break the very fragile peace. Robin? Thanks very much, Tom. As Tom mentioned, there's controversy over the wording of the referendum question. We'll have more on that angle on our website, globalnews.ca.